This is a healthy kelp forest, and this is the way it used to be from Baja, California to Alaska. Rich, diverse ecosystem, creating the habitat for millions of organisms and nurturing mammals along the way. Now, what creates this healthy ecosystem is the sea star. There are eight different species of sea stars all up along the coast, where they should be. And they got hit very hard by an unknown invasive pathogen. And it's called sea star wasting disease. And it absolutely disintegrates these sea stars. Now, the billions of sea stars used to be here until 2013. And what is replacing them is all purple sea urchins. It's been identified that we've lost 95% of our kelp all along this west coast. It's a horrific number. These are the bull kelp, the ones that should be like a forest. And these urchin barrens are terrifying, particularly because they can last for up to 50 years. They just go dormant. It's a crazy, horrible situation. And right now, there's a lot of different ideas of how to remove these urchins. There's an urchin barren that can be seen that is 400 miles long off our coast, from Marin County to the Oregon border. There's lots of technology, but there's one technology when it was proposed to us for research that we thought biotech might have a solution. And I'm gonna let Mike Dawson tell that story. The question for us was, is there a way to reintroduce the sunflower sea star to California, Oregon, and Washington, and to help those populations that are reintroduced be more resilient to future change, right? Whether that's changes in ocean temperature, ocean acidification, or other outbreaks of wasting disease. And so the way we approached this essentially was to try to work out what diversity was remaining or what diversity has survived after, after the wasting disease. And having identified those portions of the genome, we're developing a way to rapidly assess the diversity of genomes to identify which animals should have a tendency to be resilient to wasting disease. We're now collaborating with a team in Washington to use the information that we have about the genomics in a breeding program to restore populations in the wild. With the Nature Conservancy, we're now actually collaborating to try to do that part of it. The next part of that project will be to take the tools that we're developing with Revive and Restore into that actually more, you know, real applied setting that has been the long-term goal. We've become more willing to try technical solutions to conservation problems in part because we've just learned a huge amount more about marine systems in the last several decades. You know, over that same period of time, two to three decades, we and the general population become much, much more aware about how severe the current threats actually are. So the need for action. And so the idea is that by restoring populations of sea stars, we would also be able to help build the resilience of kelp forest ecosystems. So I think this is a great example of biotechnology being an interesting part of the solution. But let's be clear, it's not going to be the magic fix. It's going to take all kinds of innovation and technology, from robots to aerial surveys to, you know, divers actually removing them in great quantities. But it's the combination, it's the integration of these technologies that is starting to happen that is exactly why we started this organization.